How's it everybody? So today I'm going to talk to you about the capabilities and limitations of the Ursa Mini Pro and how you can get the cleanest image possible. So whether you're a filmmaker or a photographer, learning about ISO is one of the foundations to getting a clean image. So today I'm just going to give you the basic breakdown of what ISO is, and then I'm going to show you some examples of the different ISO settings on the Ursa Mini Pro, so you can see for yourself why I feel that this gives you a cleaner image. For example, sticking with the lower ISO sensitivity between a range of ISO 200 and 400 will generally produce higher quality results than shooting with ISO 1600. That's because the ISO regulates the sensitivity of the sensor's pixels to light by boosting the electrical charge. A higher ISO creates a brighter image, but because of the increased electrical signal, the recorded images or video will be covered in digital artifacts. According to the team at Blackmagic Design, the native ISO is 800. Basically, this means ISO 800 is the sweet spot of high ISO with acceptable noise. Okay, so I've got four examples here that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to go through each shot one by one and just give you an idea of the different ISO settings and, you know, the noise that you might get in different lighting conditions. And that's the thing. This whole ISO trick and this whole getting your image clean thing is all about you know where you shoot the time of day how much light you have and um, I'm gonna show you exactly why that is so let's take a look at the first image this is shot at ISO 800 so you can see there's a lot of light there's not much shadow going on in the shot there's a little bit here at the forehead and some into the jacket but overall this is a fairly well exposed shot so let's zoom in quickly and have a quick look at the shadow and i'm going to go and you can see there's very very little noise here um you can just see it's quite clean it's pretty good and let's go to the iso 400 shot now i can see here it's a little bit cleaner let's go back one you can see there there's a hint of noise there not very much it's very very minor easily removed with noise reduction but as you can see here the ISO 400 is that hint cleaner and then we've got the ISO 200 which is obviously the cleanest of them all as there's less digital gain on those pixels and you can see they're very very clean very crisp but the trick with the ISO 200 is your dynamic range is greatly reduced so you can see here the highlights are blown out on the face and no matter what I do with the highlight puller it's not coming back properly those are fairly gone there that highlights gone so that's what you get from going to ISO 400 and ISO 800 is a greater dynamic range you see the highlights are there there's a lot you can do with them let's move on to the next image so now this one I purposely underexposed the image on the ISO 800 just to give you an idea of what happens if you do have that situation and you do want to bring the shadows up and you want to bring the brightness of the image up so let's have a look before see it's a little bit underexposed i could have easily had a fair amount more light on this image and so let's go in and see exactly what's happening here so you can see it looks fairly clean but as we go in you can see a good amount of noise there just on the tree and in the shadows and there along the eye and there's a good amount of noise there in those shadows so let's have a look what happens when we go to the ISO 400 crystal clean no noise in the shadows no noise anywhere and again this image wasn't brought up in the shadows much so it's not the true brightness amount and if I did have to bring the shadows up there would be a bit of noise so let's actually have a look so if I bring those shadows up there even if I bring them up 
there's still very, very little noise. You've got a lot of room in the ISO 400 image. So let's go to the ISO 200 now. And what I've done here is brought the image up a lot. This image was very, very dark to start with. And I've brought it right up. Way more than you actually need to. And still, no noise anywhere. It's very, very clean. So there's your ISO 800 that's been brought up. You can see the noise there. And here's your ISO 200, which has been brought up a lot. Same amount. And there's no noise. And here's the middle ground, the 400, which hasn't been brought up much, but very, very clean. You still got the good dynamic range here in the highlights, all the way into the shadows. And let's have a look at the next image. So again, here's your ISO 800. And this is lit with candlelight and we've got our background, which the sun has dipped beyond the horizon. So it's, it's fairly dark outside. So let's have a look here. Fairly clean, really good, not bad. And as you can see, I haven't done much at all. If anything, I've crushed some of the blacks. So there's not much shadow that has been brought up. Very nice, very clean. There's a little bit of color noise there that you can see and a little bit there in the, in the shadows. But let's have a look at the ISO 400. Very, very clean, very, very clean. Yes, the candlelight is a little bit brighter, but as you can see in the shadows that are the same, there's no noise at all. Very, very clean. And there's the before grade, after grade. So again, not much done. Same as the 800, very little done. And let's move on to the ISO 200 in this candlelight shot. So no noise at all, very, very clean. But again, your dynamic range is crushed a little bit and the candle, which is blown out anyway in the previous shot. But as you saw in the one before with highlights, you do lose that dynamic range in the highs at ISO 200. So let's have a look at what I've done before. This one was quite dark. So what ISO 200 does give you on the Osa Mini Pro is that ability to bring up the shadows quite a lot. You've got a lot of room to play before you get any noise visible. As you can see here in the shadows, very, very nice and clean. So let's go on to my favorite shot for this test, which is a sort of a shack, shanty town type of thing. And as you can see, yeah, this is ISO 800. We've got the streams of light coming in through the door. We've got fire here. And this is going to happen. If you've got bright sunlight coming in through a door, you're going to get blown out highlights there. So there's not much you can really do about that. But let's have a look in. And you, as you can see, there is a, 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 bit, a bit of noise, but not very much, because I haven't really done that much to the image. I've only, you know, crushed a little bit and changed the grade and then when we get to this shot here which is the crouch you can see now a little bit of noise starts to come through the image then on the pants and the shadows a little bit noisy and that's because I had to just bring it up slightly in the shadows and a little bit of noise on the face there so let's go into the ISO 400 shot of the same shot. And as you can see here, a little bit of noise, a little bit of noise there, but not much. And that's mainly because I did have to bring this one up a little, little bit, but not very much. So now let's really go to where the Ursa Mini Pro shines in these types of situations. And that is ISO 200. Now this is the cleanest image. There's no noise anywhere. Very, very little noise. Very nice, clean, sharp. It's great, it looks good. The highlights are still there in the, sh in the smoke. The door is obviously blown out just like the other one, which you can see here, ISO 400, still blown out, but all the details there. And ISO 200 is very clean. ISO 400 is also very clean, as you can see here. Nice and clean, nice and sharp. Little bit of noise there. But here at ISO 800, you can see in the hat, a lot of noise, a lot of noise in the shadows. 
and that's not even bringing it up that much. So now you've seen quite a few different tests and examples of the different ISOs in different lighting conditions. And as you can see from what I've shown you here, the ISO 800 is really good. It is. It has the most dynamic range, but what you must remember is that ISO 800, you haven't got much room to play in terms of bringing up the shadows. You're gonna be sort of limited there. And if you do bring up the shadows, you're gonna get a fair amount of noise in the shadows. And you can get rid of that with noise reduction, but in my opinion, shooting at ISO 400 gives you that room to play. You've got a fairly good dynamic range. You've got a lot of room in the shadows to bring that image up and to correct and to make sure that it looks good. Whereas ISO 800, you're a little bit stuck. You have to expose correctly, which is not a problem. It's a good practice to shoot the image as it's gonna look. But if you get into a situation that you really want to play a little bit and you realize, sure, I needed to bring those shadows up a bit, then ISO 400 is that range to play with. And ISO 200 just doesn't have the dynamic range in the highlights. So you're going to lose a lot of information when it comes to the dynamic range. So keeping it at that middle ground of ISO 400, for me, in most of my shoots, that's the sweet spot. If you've got a lot of shadows like this fire scene, if you've got a lot of you know, dynamic range, then shooting at ISO 400 is gonna be a really good option. If you've got a fully lit, bright daylight scene, ISO 800 is perfect, because you can expose correctly, you can easily make the image as it is meant to be, without needing to bring up any shadows or you know, doing a lot of exposure change. So, in my opinion, for the Ursa Mini Pro, ISO 400, when you've got a lot of shadows at night, is a sweet spot. So what I've shown you today is an example of what can be done to get a really clean image on the Ursa Mini Pro. But in my opinion, you should take the camera that you have, take it out, test it in all sorts of different lighting conditions, times of days, and run it through the range of ISOs that the camera has. And then you can finally find out for yourself on your camera, which is the best setting to get the cleanest image possible.